Hello everyone, and welcome to Hearthstone Custom Cards. Another episode, we're gonna be dealing with monk cards this time. Now, with this deck, I had in, what I had in mind is uh, building a very fun deck with um, kind of a gimmicky, you know, basis. But I think I have succeeded. So let's get right into it. Uh, first off, our hero is the one and only Chen Stout. I think I still haven't found a hero power generator, but his hero power is going to be zero mana, switch to another hero power. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good hero power. Also, when you use the hero power, which is automatically, so you get the first one. Every first. Let's start. I get a little bit confused. Let's start. Um, first off, we have. Uh, I'm sorry if I um, summon. Um, God damn it. I'm sorry if I sound a little bit, you know, weird. <laughs> but I just recorded this entire thingy, and turns out I wasn't recording. So. Um, yeah, it would be a sh it would be a shame if that were to happen again. Quickie, let me just check out if I'm actually recording this time. Yep, I am, and I just did something very stupid. And sorry about that. Yeah, let's get started. First card. Training Mistweaver. It's a 3 mana 1-3 with a battle cry. Restore 2 health to all friendly characters. Basically. This is a low-cost, dark-scale healer, and I think this is going to be uh, really good for control-type deck, control-type decks for a monk, as this is a very preferable and cheaper alternative to dark-scale healer. Uh, yeah, next card. Um, next card is our first epic. Which is 4 mana, 5, 6, Wise Windwalker. Uh, with a battle cry, give your opponent a 2 attack to durability or staff. Basically, I think this is a low mana Mukla, I think you could say. And uh, also, you can have two of these in a deck because it's an epic, not legendary like Mukla. So, I think. This is going to be a card that's going to be very good to play if you have uh, ooze in your deck. Which I think every deck should run because you can never know when you're going to run into a um, more hell. Sorry. I'm really exhausted because I just recorded this. Like, And turns out everything I recorded was me. So, yeah. Next card. 4 mana, 2 for Drunk Brewmaster. It's rare. A battle cry, renew a mana crystal. So, basically, let me explain this. For example, say you have an Argent Squire in your hand and a Drunk Brewmaster. You play the Drunk Brewmaster on turn 4. Uh, you get one more mana because you have 4 exhausted mana crystals and it renews one of them. So you have one mana, get it? Uh, so um, you can play the Arjun Squire. Uh, this also works, uh, this is basically like a free coin, but it's not a spell, so it doesn't trigger your Van Cleef or stuff like that. And uh, I think it's a pretty fun card. Like I said, what I had in mind when building this deck was fun, so yeah. Next card. Uh, next card is going to be our first spell, which is uh, a five mana epic, and its spell text is draw three cards and restore five health to your character. So that might seem a little bit overpowered, might seem a little bit underpowered, but I think it's a very nice hybrid card. And I think you need to have at least one of these in your decks. Uh, for example, 
this is a perfect card for a stalemate situation. For example, you are on turn 10, you and your opponent have both drawn all your cards, and um, you're left out with no cards. Uh, sorry, you've played all your cards, and you have no cards to play. Um, so basically, it's a uh, then in this situation, basically it's a race who can get the biggest damage, you know, first, so so they can finish out the opponent. This is going to be your best bet because not only does it heal you, it gives you the cards you need. So I don't think it's overpowered because you have lay in hands, uh, which is basically a buffed up version of this card, and uh, you have the druid's three mana eight. So, yeah, I don't think it's that OP. Next card, uh, plus it's an epic, so it's pretty hard to get. Considering, you know, if this was a rare, it would be considered OP, because rares are common. I know hard so logic, right? Next card. Our next card is a 4 mana common. Determined Defender. Taunt, gain plus 2 attack every time a friendly minion dies. It's a 1 attack, 5 health. So um, basically, this is going to be a really good card in control decks. For example, say you have a couple of minions out and you want to trade. You play this before you trade with the minions, and this guy gets buffed into the sky. I don't think it's OP, because um, considering you can technically have the stats of a 1-5 on turn 3 and I don't think taunt costs any stats because you have Tazdingo which is a 3-5 with taunt and um, it doesn't cost the, the taunt doesn't cost any mana or stats so I think this card is gonna be really fun uh, to play or potentially game breaking however I don't think it's OP for another reason and that is because it's in flame strike range uh, 5 mana isn't that hard to kill, uh, especially on later turn turns, but I think it's going to be a very useful card nonetheless, and uh, very useful in the monk control type deck. Okay, next card. Uh, next card is a spell, a 7 mana uh, s basic spell. Soothing Mist. Uh, heal all friendly characters for 4 health and give them immune this turn. This is basically a reverse flame strike with a immune effect, and I don't think this card is OP. For example, uh, because um, because Priest has uh, a zero mana heal for health to all friendly characters, and uh, a uh, warrior has a three mana give all friendly minions immune. So I don't think this is OP. And again, it's very good in a situation where you have a lot of minions. It's very beneficial in that kind of situation. So I think Monk is going to be a very control type deck if they ever implement it. Next card. Spinning Crane Kick. A 6 mana. Deal 3 damage to all enemy minions. Destroy your opponent's weapon. Speaking of Flame Strike, um, this is... A poor man's flame strike. It's a monk's flame strike, basically, because you have um, your um, six mana and your three damage. Uh, basically, a buffed down, um, sorry, a nerfed flame strike. However, you have this one little effect that could prove crucial in the entire game. It's destroy your opponent's weapon. Uh, for example, say you're on turn two, 10 and you play, um, what was it, Wise Windwalker. It gives your opponent a 2 2 war staff. However, you play a Spinning Crane Kick next, gets rid of that flame, um, gets rid of that war staff, and um, potentially your opponent's minions. So I think this is gonna be a really cool combo, and uh, I think this card is gonna get some play if it's ever implemented into the game. Next up, we have a very fun card called Misty Brew, and it's um, zero mana, common, transform all the leftover mana at the end of your turn into armor. Now, I've seen this variant in a another monk deck, uh, but it's mana, 
it's called manatee and um, it gives all your mana that you didn't use this turn onto your next turn which I think is a pretty stupid concept but I think this is going to be better which is uh, say you're in turn 10 again the stalemate, the stalemate situation uh, suddenly you draw this card you have nothing else to play but if you don't play anything else this turn next turn you're having you're gonna have a 10 you're gonna have 10 mana 10 uh, sorry 10 armor say this uh, say you are on turn 5 and you have no cards to play play uh, for example Say you're on turn 5 and you have an Argent Square and like a Ragnaros and a Sylvanas and you can't play them. Play the Argent Square, you get a 1 mana minion and you get 4 armor, which is nothing to laugh at considering, you know, you could win the game on 1 health. So even 1 armor is better than... Uh, also, considering armor is uh, very much the preferable alternative to health because you can be capped at 30 health and still gain more mana, uh, gain more armor. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of busy right now. Next off, we have another card, which is a minion uh, this turn. It's a 3 mana 2-2 two -two rare veteran monk. Just battle cry, destroy one of your opponent's mana crystals. I think... This is going to be a very aggressive type card, and I thought of a perfect situation to play this card. Say you're on turn um, two, you coin out this card. It destroys your opponent's crystal, and on turn three, your opponent's ha your opponent has one mana. Uh, sorry, on turn uh, two, your opponent has one mana or three, respectively. You know, you could play this at uh, turn ten, and you could. Potentially save yourself a man mind control if you're playing against a priest or stuff like that It's a very useful card. I think and it's gonna be a very fun card. Also love the art next card Pandaren sage, which is the opposite of this card. It's a four mana three three uh, It's a rare card as veteran monk is and its death rattle is gain a mana crystal so it's wild growth costing one mana. However, it's at a death rattle cost, which is consider considerably worse than, um, it's considerably worse than Battle Cry, because Battle Cry is an instant effect, but death rattle is, uh, you, you know, the minion has to die itself. But, you know, say you play this on turn Four, and your opponent is a hunter with snipe and you instantly gain a mana crystal this is uh you know even if your this character dies which he's inevitably gonna because you know on turn four you have plenty of ways to deal with a 3-3 three, three. uh you gain a mana crystal which may be you know useless on later turns but in the early game, it's this really good thing to have. Because you can rush out bigger cards, especially if you have a coin. Um, so, yeah. I think that's gonna do... I mean, even on turn 10, it gives you a draw card, so... It's not a bad card, even on turn 10. Next off, we have the Misty Zealot, which is our second highest mana cost minion in our entire deck. Uh, it's a common with stats for attack, 8 health, and its battle cry is make your opponent discard a random card from their hand. It's basically an anti-hand block with really good stats. So in the arena, I think if this get if this, again, if this deck gets implemented into arena uh in, into the game uh in arena if this was played in arena it's gonna be a great card because not only do you get great stats i mean eight health is pretty good in arena attacks not that important 
but you also get to uh, troll your opponent a little bit. Plus, you can discard a crucial card, like, for example, he's a mage and you're on 9 health, and you can discard his Pyroblast, so that can happen too. It's, it's a possibility, just saying. Next card, I really love this card, it's called Fortitude. Forti. Fort. Forti. Just read the goddamn text. Uh, sorry. It's, uh, 2 mana. Give a minion plus 3 attack. If you do not have enough mana to cast the spell on this turn, use your next turn's mana. Uh, so it sort of works like Overload, but you can play it on turn 1. So let me just set the uh, stage for you. You have an Argent Squire. Uh, you have this card. You're in turn 1. You play the Argent Squire. You play this card. The Argent Squire gets buffed to a 4-1 with Divine Shield. You get... Uh, so on your next turn, which is going to be turn 2, if you play this on the scenario that I am currently describing, um, you're not going to have enough mana. You're not going to have any mana. Because it, this card costs 2 mana. On turn 2, it's going to be 2 mana, like, overloading. But I don't use the term overload because you can't play overload cards if you don't have any mana. But you can play this card. Uh, yeah, I think it's a pretty nice card. And buffing decks, if, if there's such a thing as aggro, um, monk is gonna be a pretty cool card. But I don't think it's gonna be an aggro monk. You could potentially try it. There are cool stuff you can do with this deck, especially with the healing and stuff. But I don't think it's a possibility. Next card. Um, yeah, next cards are basically our last card. Um, no, second to last card, which is Will of the Celestials. It's an eight mana uh, card. It's a basic card. It should it should have been an epic, but things got screwed up. Sorry, got that guys. Uh, Summoning random spawn of the Celestials. So, um, these minions that can be summoned are four, so there's a 25% chance you can get each one of them, and they're pretty useful, in my opinion, so let's take a look at them. First one is the Spawn of Yulon. It doesn't cost one mana. I've already explained that. Uh, it's just that when the card gets returned, gets sapped into your hand or something like that, if it's a card that is activated by another card, meaning you can't get it in your hand, for example, like the Defias Bandits, other Defias Bandit, or the Argent Squire um, that drops out of the um, Stormwind Knight. Sorry, I, uh, I think you get what I'm saying. Uh, or the Boar that comes from the Razor Fen Hunter, you know, they, they all cost one mana because they had, when they're returned to your hand, you have to summon them back. So basically, Spawn of Elon is um, spell damage plus 3, 4 mana, 5 health. Which is considering, you know, you can just replace the one with um, 8, because it's in a 25% random chance to be selected. Uh, but I think this is an OP, this is, isn't uh, an OP card, and it's gonna be really fun. I love this card, I love the Celestials, I really do. Next off, we have the... Spawn of New Zhao or Zhao, which is a 2 mana, 9 health with taunt. I don't think this card is OP considering the 8 mana stat is 16. And this is 11, if you combine the two stats, they attack at health. Plus the taunt, which can be one, can be more than one mana. Can't be more than one mana. I don't think this card is OP. I don't. Plus, combining the 25% chance. You know, we can't rely on this card, but what you can rely on is getting pretty cool cards off of it. Next off, we have the spawn of Shiji, Chiji, Fuji, I don't, I don't know, guys. Um, and uh, it has um, 3 attack, 9 mana, Wind Fury. Um, so basically, this card is an OP, as I said, uh, but is a really good removal. Or Wind Fury. No, if you buff this card up, you're gonna have a 
your opponent is going to have a bad time. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say about it, honestly. And the last one is Spawn of Xuan, Xuan, I don't know, I have no idea how to pronounce that. But it's a 5-6 with charge, I, and I don't think this is OP again, because um, it's an 8-mana, eight, eight but... You know, you don't have that many cool 8 mana minions, even though you have Ragnaros and stuff like that. But, um, I think these are, these are gonna be pretty respectable 8 mana drops. So, yeah. Anyways, moving on to the next card, it's gonna be our last card also, and the Legendary, which is gonna be Taran Zoo. 4 mana, 3-4. Whenever a minion dies, gain stealth and plus one attack. So, um, the best situation, you know, the maximum value potential here is um, getting a full board and trading with this character. And once you've traded with all of them, for example, tra say you've traded three minions with three other minions, which is the ideal case, you can also trade six other minions with, uh, you know, six other minions which is gonna be just mad but say you play this card with a um, full board and three minions straight with three other minions let's just say it like that so this guy gets six attack and stuff so this I don't think it's an OP card cuz um, if you don't have anything on the board this is pretty useless and you have one uh, you know you have one attack bonus you have a one attack bonus which isn't that big but considering this circumstance could be and four mana is a very easy target to remove especially once he's attacked you with all that enormous um, attack and he's removed his stealth on turn four there are plenty of ways you can destroy a three four or even a nine four or in a worst case scenario a ten four uh, but I think this card is an OP and it, I think it's really good. But anyways, that's my thought on the subject. Plus it's a legendary so it's really 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 hard to get, believe me. Uh, yeah, I think those are all the cards and um, thanks for watching by the way, I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, yeah, I think that's... Um, that's it, the cards are gonna be in the description, and um, uh, once again I didn't make the images, I made the cards, uh, the images belong to their respectful owners, Blizzard or fan artists or stuff like that, I don't take credit for them, but yeah, that's it, bye.